Hello, hello! My name is Callista, and welcome back to Mass Effect Legendary Edition. In the last episode, we were exploring the Normandy, and I did say I was going to make sure everyone's equipment was up to snuff. Now, I won't show off everyone's, however, as you can see, Naomi is rocking this very fancy new armor. Um, I'll just kind of go through. I can't exactly remember what I changed. I know I upgraded her pistol, and I ended up giving her chemical rounds plus 30% toxic damage. I'm not gonna lie, I did like the description. Popular with pirates, criminals, and mercenaries, these rounds are coated with a highly toxic compound. Maybe she would have used a mod like this back when she was running with the gang and she thought, yeah, I like this. It's my style. I'm familiar with this mod. I'll use it. So yeah, I, I like that. And then just some extra weapon stability because, you know, why not? Uh, let's see. The Avenger one. I don't, I don't think I actually changed her sniper rifle. I added an upgrade to the grenade launcher because why not? I could. And yeah, as you can see, she's gotten some snazzy new armor. Everyone else has been upgraded. So all I have to do is sell off the excess equipment. I'm hoping I can sell them to that guy. However, let's let's do a bit of chatting first. Commander. Hello. What's your opinion of the last mission? Kind of wish you'd got there sooner, Commander. No offense. I appreciate the rescue. I just wish that we'd have been able to help your unit. I, I don't think Naomi would take any offense to that, bearing in mind she's been in Ashley's position. She has watched her unit die and managed to get to safety, and then when the rescue team came, like, hey, the cavalry's here, we're here to save you guys. Well, no, you can't. It's just me. Everyone else is dead. There is no one else, so I... I think she gets what Ashley is saying, and she she wouldn't take any offense by that. You wish we'd been able to save the rest of your unit. Yes, ma'am. If I had been more alert, we wouldn't have been cut down by an ambush. Ag again, I think Naomi would have felt very similar things after a coup, and she probably does still think those things when she's at her lowest. She probably thinks, oh, if, I, if I'd have just been more alert, if I'd just been more prepared, then maybe, maybe more of us would have gotten out there. But, you know, then she thinks about it and she says, well, how were we supposed to know? How were we supposed to know what had happened on the planet? We couldn't have, and Ashley couldn't have known. The Geth are perfect ambushers. They don't move, they don't make noise. They don't even breathe. They have flashlight heads, ma'am. I'll make sure it doesn't happen again. Oh, I mean, it's true. They do have flashlights for heads. You could mistake that, though. You could mistake them for flashlights. You know, oh, the dock workers all have flashlights. I don't know. Maybe it's going to get dark soon later. Oh, oh, dear. I, I presume that's going to say the exact same thing yet. Um, can we talk? Do you have a few minutes to talk? One-on-one? -on -one? I'm sorry, Commander. I need to get my duty squared away. I wouldn't mind talking more later, though. Okay. Dismissed, Chief. Ma'am. Again, I'm expecting a load of options to pop up with things we can talk to the companions about, and it's freaking me out. I'm like, but how, how will I get to know them? How will I get to know them if I don't have these, these options? Nice ship you've got, Shepard. What can I do for you? Personal inquiry. What's your story, Rex? There's no story. Go ask the Quarian if you want stories. Nah, come on. You Krogans live for centuries. Don't tell me you haven't had a few interesting adventures. Well, there was this one time the Turians almost wiped out our entire race. That was fun. Oof. I heard about that. You know, they almost did the same to us. 
It's not the same. Oh. Here's the thing, it really isn't. It really isn't because... How do I put this? What happened to the Krogans is so much worse. It, it, oh God, I, I have what I want to say in my brain, but I don't know if I have the words. It is, it, it's like, okay, okay this is gonna sound really weird. This is gonna be a, a quite an odd comparison, but stick with me here, stick with me. It's like when, when a woman has breast cancer and she needs a double mastectomy and then she gets, um, you know, uh, implants in. And if she were telling someone like, yeah, I needed, a, I needed a double mastectomy and they say, oh, well, at least you got a nice new pair of tits out of it. It's like, sir, that was an amputation. I'm not particularly attached to my tits, gotta be honest there. However, a lot of women, that is their... Like, that, that shows that they are feminine. It is a part of what makes them a woman, and that has been ripped away from them. What are you saying? Oh, you got a nice new pair of tits out of it. What the fuck? You wouldn't say that to someone who's had a leg amputated. Oh, well, you got a nice shiny new metal leg. Like, you wouldn't even think of saying that. Why Why would you say that to someone who's had to have a double mastectomy and had implants put in? Like, sir, sir, like, why would you say that? Now, some women wouldn't take offense to that. They'd be like, yeah, I do have some nice, a nice new pair of tits. Hey, double thumbs up. But a lot of women would, they'd be like, excuse me. Excuse me, I wasn't insecure with my body and then I, I wanted to get plastic surgery. I was going through something harrowing and I had a part of myself ripped away and I had implants put in. Like, what? Like, sir, sir, that is incredibly... It's dismissive. It's dismissive and insisting that... Oh, what the Turians did to the Krogans is on the same level as what the Turians did to the humans. It isn't. It isn't. Because trying to kill a bunch of people off, it's so much better than what happened to the Krogans. Death is not the worst thing you can do to a person. I, I wholeheartedly stand by that. I, I know that is not an opinion that everyone will have, but I, I wholeheartedly believe there are so many worse things that you can do to a person, to a group of people, than just kill them. The Krogans were sterilized. I believe the Codex entry says that it makes pregnancies unviable. How? How does it make them unviable? Because, you know, there's one option which is just like, oh, it, it just means that um, men don't produce sperm and the women don't produce eggs if that's, if that's how they make babies. I don't know, like that, in a way, that would be quite a nice way of sterilizing the Krogan. Because the alternative, the alternative to that is stillbirths and that is horrific that is absolutely horrific again i hope i hope you all are coming on this journey with me i hope that y'all didn't get left at but uh, left at port left at port get on the boat get on the boat come with me here i having to go through stillbirths it would be traumatic people being traumatized every single day and the krogans have a high birth rate so potentially they're going through multiple stillbirths a year again i ha i have kind of jumped to the worst case scenario here it could just be oh we we do not produce the necessary fluids but 
sterilization is so much worse than just killing them off because now they're dying a slow death. They are dying a slow death and it's their own bodies that are betraying them. That is fucking horrific. That is awful. That is so much worse than their planet just being nuked to oblivion and they all died in an instant. Like, I, I hope you get what I'm saying here. I hope you get what I'm saying here. It seems pretty much the same to me. So your people were infected with a genetic mutation? An infection that makes only a few in a thousand children survive birth? And I suppose it's destroying your entire species? So, oh god. So it is the worst possible option. God, those poor women. The poor men, too. I, I don't know how Krogan family structures work. A, a stillbirth is hard on both parents. Not just the, the one carrying the child, but also the the other partner who has to witness, you know, okay, my, my, my wife, my partner, whatever, is going through all of this grief. And I'm grieving too because that was my child. And not only that, they're in pain and I am completely powerless to help them. Like, this is... That is terrible. That is absolutely terrible. I suppose it isn't all the same. I don't expect you to understand. But don't compare humanity's fate with the Krogan. Da doy? Da doy, it's a touchy subject. Their kids are dying and they can't stop it. Like, uh. -huh. Sorry, Rex. I wasn't trying to get you upset. Your ignorance doesn't upset me, Shepard. As for the Krogan, I gave up on them long ago. The genophage infected us, but it's not what's killing us. Hmm. Are you people really dying? We're sure not getting any stronger. We're too spread out. None of us are interested in staying in our own system. Lots of species have left their homes and prospered. But they go to colonize new worlds. We're not settlers. We're warriors. We want to fight. So we leave hire ourselves out and most of us never go back what can you tell me about the genophage ask the salarians if you want details they made it all i know it makes breeding nearly impossible thousands die in stillbirth and most never get that far Every Krogan is infected. Every one. And no one's rushing to find a cure. Oh. Oh. Why don't the Krogan try to find a cure? When was the last time you saw a Krogan scientist? You ask a Krogan. Would he rather find a cure for the genophage or fight for credits? He'll choose fighting every time. It's just who we are, Shepard. I can't change that. Nobody can. It sounds like... And bearing in mind, I'm, I only have Rex's perspective here, but how he's describing the Krogan, they're a very immediate species. They're not thinking long-term. They're just thinking, okay, what can we do right now in the moment? But Rex... I do think Rex sees long-term, and there are probably other Krogan out there who are very similar to Rex, but obviously I haven't met them. I can't, I can't talk about characters I, I haven't met and don't even know if they exist. But Rex does seem to see the bigger picture. He can think long-term, but he is, he's not a scientist. He's a warrior. He is a fighter. 
he can see that his species is dying and that someone needs to do something, but he can also see that he's not the one to do it. He's not the one who is going to figure out how to cure the genophage because it's it, it's beyond his capabilities. Oof. So long, Rex. Shepard. Alright. Anything else? Just in case. Shepard. Okay. Okay, good stuff. Rex. Alrighty then. And... Yes, Garrus. Hello. Thanks for bringing me on board, Commander. I knew working with this Bektu would be better than life at CSAC. Really? Because you seem to have a... A rather strong distaste for Saren, although that that could have just been because he was a Torian who was making other Torians look bad. It might not have had anything to do with the fact that he was a Spectre. Have you worked with the Spectre before? Well, no, but I know what they're like. Spectres make their own rules. You're free to handle things your way. But CSEC, you're buried by rules. The damn bureaucrats are always on your back. Ooh. Here's the thing. Naomi is very willing to bend the rules. She's willing she's very willing to break the rules. I do apologize for all the times my uh my speech is kind of molding into one. I'm having a wisdom tooth out tomorrow and uh I'm real fucking nervous about it. I oh I've never had a, a surgery before and it's um it's freaking me out a little bit. I I know I'll be fine. I know that nothing will go wrong. Fingers crossed, knock on wood. But it, it, it still doesn't assuage my fears, you know. Um, What was I saying? Yes. Naomi is willing to break the rules. But how do I put it? legal rules oh yeah we can break them sure no problem moral rules like you know general like don't be a dick don't be a murdering psychopath don't be doing shit like that you know like those rules naomi's like maybe let's not do that like let's not go killing people who are no threat to us that that would be wrong she does have some rules that she tries not to break, but, oh, Normally I'd go down the middle, but I don't... You shouldn't complain. I'm like, what is that? Like, the damn bureaucrats are always on your back. You shouldn't complain. But I'm like, why shouldn't he complain? I don't know what you're going to follow that up with. I think this runs the risk of like, oh yeah, we can do whatever the fuck we want. And... Here's the thing Naomi doesn't do whatever the fuck she wants. She does still have some rules that she's like, right, I'm willing to go so far. Maybe the law says I should only go, you know, up to, up to here, but I'm willing to go a little bit further. But once I reach that line, no. No more after that. So... It's not that bad. At CSEC, you're buried by rules. The damn bureaucrats are always on your back. I guess this could be like, oh, it's not that bad. At least you have backup, like, immediately there. I, oh, I don't know. I, I wish I could see what they actually said. I really wish I could see that. When in doubt, go neutral. For the most part, the rules are there for a reason. Maybe. 
But sometimes it feels like the rules are only there to stop me from doing my work. If I'm trying to take down a suspect, it shouldn't matter how I do it, as long as I do it. But CSEC wants it done their way. Protocol and procedure come first. That's why I left. That was perfect. For the most part, rules are there for a reason. I, I like that. I really like that for Naomi. She's like, okay, the rules are there for a reason, but sometimes there are stupid rules or rules that don't make sense. And then we break. I, perfect. Yeah, when in doubt, go down the middle. So you just quit because you didn't like the way they do things? There's more to it than that. It didn't start out bad, but as I rose in ranks, I got saddled with more and more red tape. C-Sex handling of Saren was typical. I just couldn't take it anymore. I hate leaving. I hope you made the right choice. I'd hate for you to regret it later. Well, that's sort of why I teamed up with you. It's a chance for me to get off the Citadel, see how things are done outside CSEC. Either way, I plan to make the most of this. And without CSEC headquarters looking over my shoulder, well, maybe I can get the job done my way for a change. Uh... Here's the thing, buddy. You're not in charge here. We are. And if you want to do something that Naomi would disagree with, then she is going to try and stop you. If getting the job done means endangering innocent people, then no. We get the job done right, not fast. Got it? I wasn't trying to. I understand, Commander. Hmm. Commander, good to see you. Okay. And thank you for the codex entry. I think... Garrus is... How do I want to put this? I think we could have issues with Garrus. And I, I don't mean that like, oh, I think he's going to be a dickhead. I think... I think he's a bit idealistic. And he wants... You know, he wants to save the day but he wants to do it as fast as possible. And sometimes the quickest route is not always the best. That's what I mean when I say I, th I think we could run into problems with him. To be honest, I think we could run into problems with Ashley, but that's more so because I, uh, I, I think she might be a massive space racist. And uh, I, w with Garrus, I think we could run into problems with how he does stuff. With Ashley, I think we could run into problems because of her personality. That's that's my feel of both of those characters. Hey, Commander. Looking for some extra supplies before you head out? What have you got? Whatever you want. Armor, weapons, mods. It's not standard Alliance issue, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Well, as long as you don't mind paying for it. Why should I pay you for my weapons and armor? My stuff doesn't come from the Alliance. I have to purchase it myself, and it's not cheap. Hell, the licenses alone have set me back more than I'd like. But no licenses, no goods. Without the goods, I'm out of a job. What are licenses? Why do you need them? Manufacturers sell licenses. Each license allows me to buy and sell a certain brand of products. I already have several basic ones, but you'll need to buy more if you want me to bring in different brands. Many of the best licenses are hard to get, but they're well worth the cost if you can find them. Well, I've already bought a few. What do the different manufacturers offer? There are too many for me to keep track of, but each license will explain what it's good for. Yeah, I haven't been paying attention to that. I have just been being like, oh, a license, let me grab it. How often will you get new items? Well, that depends on how many licenses you've purchased, but I'll rotate items on a regular basis regardless. And any time we land someplace with a big enough port, I'll buy, sell, and trade whatever I can. Check back often. I need to move items quickly, so only the most basic items will be stocked consistently. Okay. Let's see what you've got. You bet, Commander. Now, here's the thing. I can... Yeah, I, I can sell all of this. I can sell all of this because none of it. Just 
Go quickly. Just go. Leave my inventory. There we are. Okay, now what do you actually have? Oh my god. Oh my god, how... I think this is the goal. I think this is the goal. I want this pistol. Oh my god. It, it's all so expensive. I... Dear lord. I mean... Here's the thing, on, on one hand we haven't even done the first main mission and we're already up to 6,600 credits, so we, we might be able to afford this before the end of the game, but I don't, I don't know, I don't know what earning money is like in this game, hmm. And Tally! Tally, hello there. Your ship's amazing, Shepard. I've never seen a drive core like this before. I can't believe you were able to fit it into a ship this small. I'm starting to understand why you humans have been so successful. I had no idea Alliance vessels were so advanced. Th this seems very suspicious. I, I, I don't like it. Um... Yeah, not, not every Alliance vessel is like this one. The Normandy's a prototype, cutting-edge technology. A month ago, I was patching a makeshift fuel line into a converted tugship in the flotilla. Now, I'm sitting on board one of the most advanced vessels in Citadel space. I have to thank you again for bringing me along. Traveling on a vessel like this is a dream come true for me. I had no idea you found ship technology so interesting. It comes with being a Quarian. The migrant fleet is the key to the survival of my people. Ships are our most valuable resource. But we don't have anything like this. We make do with cast-offs and second-hand equipment. We just try to keep them running for as long as we can. Some of the fleet's larger vessels date all the way back to our original flight from the Geth. Wow! I can't believe your fleet's still using ships that are three centuries old. They're constantly being repaired, modified, and refitted. They aren't pretty, but they work. Mostly. We've tried to make ourselves as independent as possible on the flotilla. Grow our own food, mine, and process our own fuel. But some things we just can't make on our own. A patch to maintain the hull integrity requires raw materials we just don't have. That's why our pilgrimages are so important. Tell me about your people. Our lives aren't easy. Resources are scarce, and we are constantly on the move. Everything we do must in some way contribute to the continuation of the migrant fleet. There are 17 million Quarians in the flotilla, and each of us relies on the others for survival. The bonds among my people are strong. Unfortunately, we have had to surrender many of the freedoms and civil liberties other species take for granted. What kind of freedoms? Well, it's illegal for parents to have more than one child. If our population grows too much, it would strain our resources to their breaking point. Of course, we also can't allow our numbers to become too few. If our population is in decline, the rule against single births is temporarily repealed. In extreme cases of population decline, incentives are even offered to encourage multiple births. Though the Conclave hasn't had to take such measures in nearly a century. The Conclave? Divine Justinia, what? That's your government. The Conclave is our civilian branch of government. Each ship can elect a representative to serve on the Conclave and make decisions that affect the fleet as a whole. On matters that affect an individual ship, however, the captain has the final say. It's a tradition that dates back to the early days, when the fleet was governed by martial law. Fortunately, most captains nowadays are smart enough to have an elected council from their crew to give them advice and guidance. I'm gonna warn you right now, any time 
a word that has significant importance within the Dragon Age franchise comes up, I will have a similar reaction. I will. I, I love that franchise. I love it so much. And this is really interesting. So the ultimate power rests with elected officials? In practice, the Conclave and the respective council for each ship tend to set the rules that govern our daily lives. But in theory, we are still under military jurisdiction. The five top-ranking military officials in the fleet serve on the Admiralty Board. These five have the power to overrule any decision by the Conclave in case of emergency. To do so requires unanimous agreement among the Admiralty. And they can only do this once. After that, the entire board must resign their posts. It's a safeguard that served us well. In nearly three centuries, the Admiralty Board has only overruled the Conclave four times. This is... This is so interesting! This is so, so interesting. And here's the thing, you can tell that Bioware knew. You can tell, compared to, you know, the dialogue options we had with Rex or Garrus. Bioware clearly knew, okay, people are going to have a lot of questions about the Quarians and the Geth because they're kind of the main villains, or at least they're in league with the main villain of this game. Oh, I... I'm really enjoying this, however... I should go. See you later. I am just about out of time for this episode. And you know what? I don't think I'm going to be reading any codex entries. As I as I said before, I I know that I'm... My, my speech is a wee bit slurred. And I don't think that's going to get better the more I record. So I, I think I'm going to take a bit of a break from codex reading. In the next episode, we continue speaking with Tally. But until then, please remember to like if you enjoyed. Leave a comment below. And if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next episode.